Hi, I'm Christina and welcome to a new story. Help me get to a thousand subscribers on this channel. Thank you. Sergei's first marriage lasted five years. It was dissolved on the initiative of his ex-wife, Natalie. Her decision was greatly influenced by Sergei's unwillingness to have children. He believed that they were still young and needed to live for themselves, and that children would only get in their way. Natalie did not agree with Sergei. In her opinion, they had lived for themselves long enough and it was time for children. She wanted a full-fledged family, but Sergei was categorically against it. When the fifth anniversary of their wedding came, Natalie decided that she had had enough. She had waited long enough, but Sergei had not changed his mind. So Natalie filed for divorce. Sergei did not want to get divorced at all, he was comfortable in his marriage with Natalie, but she was adamant. She wanted children, and she did not want Sergei as a child. And lately, he had been behaving like a child. He demanded constant attention and care. Even Sergei's mother, Olga Anatolyevna, was on the side of her daughter-in-law, completely understanding her, as a woman. His father, Nikolai Ivanovich, accepted the situation in silence, he never interfered in the family relations of his eldest daughter and was not going to interfere with his son either. Natalie left, and Sergei went head over heels into work. It seemed that he was very worried and regretted what had happened, but he did not try to return his ex-wife. And six months after the divorce, he had another woman. Yulia worked with him in the same company, she was a young but quite serious woman. Their relationship with Sergei started during one of the business trips, where they went together by coincidence. Two weeks together were enough for Sergei and Yulia to start a far-from-working relationship. When Olga Anatolyevna found out about her son's new relationship, she decided to talk to him. She was interested to know if her son had changed his attitude towards family life or if his views remained the same. She was very worried that the same thing would happen as the first time. Sergei reassured his mother that Yulia had the same views as he did about family and children. At least, she didn't want them for now. Olga Anatolyevna just sighed, thinking that she would probably never have grandchildren from her youngest son. Sergei and Yulia dated for a year, and then decided to legalize their relationship. Their wedding was held in a very narrow circle, there were only Sergei's parents, his sister with her husband, Yulia's mother and several of their mutual friends. Everything went more than modestly, they all visited a quiet restaurant, celebrated the marriage of Sergei and Yulia, and on this celebration it was over. They had been married for two years already, and a year later Sergei turned 30. Yulia was two years younger than him, they lived very well. Sergei really loved Yulia, and she loved him. Once, while walking in the park, they met Natasha. She was sitting on a bench, next to her was a stroller with a baby sleeping peacefully in it. She was talking on the phone with one hand, and with the other hand she was constantly adjusting something in the stroller. Natasha looked very happy, she didn't even notice Sergei and Yulia. All her attention was occupied by the baby, from whom she did not take her eyes off, but also, of course, by the phone conversation. It was clear that this conversation gave her joy. After this meeting, Sergei began to notice that his worldview had changed. He recalled Natasha's happy eyes, how great she looked and how she talked on the phone. It was clear to the naked eye that she was happy, and apparently her child had a lot to do with it. Now Sergei looked at his ex-wife's desire to have children in a completely different way. He increasingly thought about the fact that a family without children is somehow incomplete. He remembered the words of his father, which he said when Sergei was still married to Natasha. It was then that his father's birthday was celebrated. And traditionally on such days the whole family gathered together. At the height of the holiday, Sergei's sister Anya stunned everyone with the news. That she is expecting a second child. Her eldest son was four years old at that time. Everyone began to congratulate Anya and her husband. 
Olga Anatolyevna even burst into tears, Nikolai Ivanovich also congratulated his daughter and son-in-law. The parents were really very happy that they would have a second grandson, or maybe a granddaughter. They said that they didn't care who was born, as long as everything was fine. Sergei and Natasha also congratulated Anya and her husband. Anya said, as if in jest, when will you and Natasha please us with a baby? My beloved husband was born the only child in the family. And now I'm sitting without nephews. I thought I would wait for my brother, but you still haven't grown up or something, Sergei. Before Sergei could respond, his father answered for him. What are you talking about? Your mother and I have almost stopped waiting. It seems that our Sergei is still a child himself. We are tired of waiting for him to mature, but I think his time hasn't come yet. Let's wait for your understanding, and maybe Sergei will finally mature. This was the only time Sergei's father had ever spoken about the topic of childbearing in Sergei's family. He never mentioned it again. Now, remembering this incident, Sergei suddenly realized that he had matured. He himself felt that he had become more adult in recent years. Previously, in his marriage to Natasha, he almost never went to the store for groceries. This was Natasha's responsibility. He could only stop by for a loaf of bread and milk. Now, due to the fact that Yulia worked a lot and often came home late, Sergei often bought groceries himself. And it didn't seem like anything supernatural to him. Although before it was exactly like that. Or now he could calmly stay with his nephews, he could stop by his sister's house and spend half a day with them, walking in the park or riding the rides. And the impressions of such trips were more than positive for everyone. Previously, he was not interested in this, and he simply bought off his nephews with expensive gifts, which greatly offended his sister. There were enough such situations. What he used to perceive in one way, he now perceived in a completely different way, and these changes were noticed not only by him. They were also noticed by Yulia, who began to look at her husband differently. She saw how he had changed in just a year. One year after the wedding, he was a completely different person. He used to take everything too lightly. Now he became more serious, and he began to treat everything completely differently. These changes were noticed by his mother. She was very happy for her son, now she knew that her Sergei was not a frivolous boy, but a quite mature man. In general, the whole family was happy with the changes that had taken place in Sergei, and they all waited for things to get even better, and he would never return to his previous frivolous life. One evening after work, Sergei and Yulia were having dinner at home. Suddenly Sergei said, Yulia, do you know what I thought? Well, what? In general, I think it's time for us to think about a child. It's foolish to devote your whole life to work. I think there are more important things in life, and work will not run away. Especially since a child has the ability to grow up, and you don't have to stay home with them all your life. I also work and I think I can support you and the baby while you stay home with him, or do you doubt me? Yulia had been waiting for this conversation, waiting and fearing it. After a short silence, Yulia looked at Sergei and said, Sergei, I have something to tell you. I should have done it a long time ago, or rather right away, but I was afraid. Please, try to understand me. She fell silent again, it was clear that this conversation was very difficult for her. Sergei looked at her and waited to hear anything, but not what he heard. Sergei, I can't have children and I'll never be able to get pregnant. Forgive me for not telling you right away. I couldn't, I loved you too much and was very afraid of losing you. There was a silence at the table. Yulia and Sergei were silent, he didn't know how to react to this news. She didn't know what to say for her own defense, but they both understood that now their whole love, family and much more were at stake. Yulia's confession sounded like a thunderclap to Sergei. That evening they could not talk normally. 
For the first time since their wedding, Sergei went to bed separately from Yulia. He wanted to think and decide how they should live now. He understood that Yulia had not deceived him on purpose at the beginning of their relationship. Sergei constantly talked about how he didn't want children and complained about his ex-wife, who was obsessed with children. Yulia always listened to him very carefully, but only now did Sergei begin to remember how much pain was in her eyes. At that time, he thought she was worried about him and sympathized with him because his wife didn't understand him at all. Only now did he understand what Yulia was going through then and how painful and bad it was for her to hear such conversations. Sergei was angry, but not at Yulia, but at himself. He cursed himself for being so stupid and narcissistic that he didn't notice the pain and worries of his beloved woman. Because of his egoism, he lost Natasha. He could not and did not want to lose Yulia. He couldn't sleep that night. In the morning he decided to talk to Yulia and tell her everything that came to his mind at night. That is, to say how much he loves her, that he realized what an egoist he was, and that he would never leave her. And if it happened that they won't have children, then so be it. They are not the first, and they are not the last. But Sergei didn't have time to tell Yulia all this. When Sergei left the room and knocked on the door of their shared bedroom with Yulia, he was in for an unpleasant and incomprehensible surprise. Yulia was not in the room, the bed was made. It turned out that Yulia did not spend the night at home and left yesterday evening or at night. But where could Yulia have gone? Sergei had no idea. Her mother lived in another city. Yes, Yulia never had a close relationship with her. After the wedding, Sergei saw her only once, and even then because she had business in their city. Only now did he realize that he had never been particularly interested in why Yulia had such a relationship with her mother, and she never talked about it. Sergei tried unsuccessfully to call Yulia, but her phone was silent. They didn't know anything at work either. And this was already very strange. It always seemed to Sergei that work meant a lot to Yulia, but it turned out that he was wrong. Sergei himself took a leave from work and rushed to look for Yulia. He even called her mother, trying to find out where Yulia might be, but she didn't know anything about her daughter. By 2 p.m., the search had yielded no results. He didn't find out anything. Sergei didn't want to tell his parents anything so as not to worry them. He almost despaired of finding Yulia. The only thing he managed to find out was that Yulia had stopped by work and taken a leave of absence at her own expense. But that was just when Sergei wasn't there. His parents were his last hope, and as much as he didn't want to, he still went to them in the hope of finding out something. Yulia was not at home with her parents, but Anya was there with her children and husband. Olga Anatolyevna immediately set the table, because it was such a joy when the family got together. Naturally, everyone was interested to know where Yulia was and why she didn't come with Sergei. At first, Sergei didn't want to tell anything. He was ashamed to spoil the family gathering with his problems. But after thinking about it, he decided and told everything to the family. Everyone was perplexed, except for Anya. She listened to her brother and said seriously, You were a fool, Sergei, and you remain one. You still haven't understood anything. You can say that Yolka made a man out of you, which Natasha, by the way, didn't succeed in doing. And as soon as you found out about her problem, you immediately ran away to think about it. Well, you've thought a lot. It's clear to everyone that this is a very serious problem, but you constantly shouted about your love for her, so where is your vaunted love? Why didn't you talk to your wife right away, didn't you discuss why she was silent? You needed a whole night, brother, but what was Yulia to think? Do you know where she is? Sergei asked. Yes, Sergei, I know, but I won't tell you. She doesn't need this now. She has enough worries as it is. But you will find another one, just know that you please try to find out everything from her at once, 
so that later there is no such thing as what happened now. Sergei had never felt such shame before. He agreed with his sister 100%, because indeed, when he met Yulia, he was not at all interested in her past life. Therefore, he did not know what had happened to Yulia before. Why did she have such a relationship with her mother, and what did Yulia do before meeting him? But he told her everything about himself, she listened silently to him, but never told anything about herself. After all, if he had been more attentive to Yulia then, there would be no such situation now, and she would be by his side, because he did not doubt for a minute that he loved her. Sergei had to persuade his sister for a very long time to give him at least some contact information for Yulia. His parents helped him a lot in this, even his father joined in, although he had previously told his son everything he thought about him, and there was little that was flattering in all this, or rather, none at all. After much persuasion, Anya finally agreed to talk to Yulia, but so far without Sergei. Yulia was also very ashamed of the deception, both before Sergei and before his parents. But she also loved Sergei very much and still decided to talk to him. Sergei and Yulia met. They had never had such a long conversation as on that day. They probably never had one before. Of course, for some time they still tried to understand themselves, their relationship, and what they both wanted. They decided to start over, and they succeeded. And a couple of years later, they adopted a little boy, who became their own son. This decision was the most important one in their lives. And they never regretted it. Now there were never any secrets between them and Sergei and Yulia, once they always understood, that if there are any secrets between two close people, they will never be truly happy, and then they will not have to make a choice, which is sometimes very difficult and not always right. Sergei and Yulia never had to make any more choices. They had already made it and were now truly happy.